So there's actually a number of different ways that you can add texture to your maps inside of GeoLayers. This particular technique, I find that it's really fast and easy, and it's also extremely customizable. It allows me to quickly swap out textures and look at different options so I can pick my favorite one quickly. All of the textures I'm using in this tutorial are brought to you by today's sponsor, Envato Elements. Now with a subscription to Envato Elements, you get access to over 56 million assets. While it's nice to create a lot of things from scratch, it's really nice to have high quality pre-made assets available at your disposal. I'm constantly using assets from Envato in my maps. These assets often include icons, ink transitions, sound effects, textures. They offer a nice and clean, simple lifetime commercial license, which is good even after your subscription ends. Following the link in the video description is going to save you 50% off when you select an annual subscription, which will give you access to everything on the site for under $20 a month. Big shout out to my tier 3 patrons, Tyson the Keymaster, Samara Mahdi, Joseph Culligan, Mike and Sandra over at YouTube, at Flumi Plus One, and Josh. Thanks again folks for making this video possible. So let's get into it. I'm going to go ahead and create a new map comp. This is Ultra HD 4K. I'm going to go with the standard map tiler imagery that I have here. Now I'm just going to turn off the labels and create a quick animation. So what I want is I want to have kind of like a medium to wide angle view of Europe here. And then we're just going to do a little fly in to a close up of France. So I'm going to add some keyframes here and go to about the four second mark and we'll zoom into France. And I'll quickly finalize this to see what we got going on. All right. So we have a nice little animation here. Now it's time to add some texture. So I got some cool crumpled paper texture elements here from Envato Elements. Uh, this site, I know they're sponsoring this episode, but I do use them all the time and they have an insane number of texture elements as well as any other kind of element you might need. But I mean, just look at all the different really high quality textures here that you can use. It's really an infinite number of assets here. So I'm going to come in here and grab just a few of these square shaped ones and I'll bring them in. And I'll just grab one and I'm going to put it at the top layer here. And if you zoom out a little bit, this is almost perfect size width wise. You can see that it's just big enough here. And to quickly blend this in, I'm going to switch the blend mode here to multiply. If you can't see the blend mode, toggle the switch down here to take care of that brown color. I don't want it at all. So I'm going to go to the effects and presets panel and I'm going to grab the tint effect and add that to the map. And now that's going to retain our actual colors. And then for opacity, I'll just bring the opacity down because this is a really strong, uh, strong texture here. So we'll bring it down to like 50%. Okay, so I've got a texture, right? I'm finished. Wrong. So the texture looks great, but the second we start to have that movement of the animation, it looks terrible. It doesn't work. If you have a subtle texture, this might work a little bit, but in my personal opinion, this, uh, this just doesn't work. So we need to have the texture stick to the map and move with the map. Now there's a number of different ways that you can do this, but the real key is to attach it at the point where you are the most zoomed in on the map. So that's going to allow you to retain the resolution of your texture. So if you just attach it anywhere, let's say you attach that texture at its widest view, then when you zoom in, you're going to have uh, you're going to have pixelization and it's going to be very low resolution. So here I am indeed at the most zoomed in part. I'm going to toggle switches and modes here and I'm going to set it to 3D and then parent it to the world map comp anchor. So the world map comp anchor is where all the movement happens. And the reason you have to make this a 3D layer is that if you do any of the bearing and pitch moves, you want that texture to naturally follow. Because if you don't make it 3D layer, it's not going to move like that. Now when I play this back, you can immediately see that the texture, if I turn off everything again, if you turn off tint and actually see that this is our texture, uh, the texture is square and it's only a certain you know resolution here. So we need to expand these edges uh, to cover up the, the, the widest view of our map. So if I bring the playhead all the way to the beginning here, this is the widest part of our map. Now a quick note, I did the animation first here, but in a real world scenario or workflow, you would want to attach the texture to the map first. And the reason for this is that it's just much easier. Like let's say that you have some crazy animation where your bearing and your pitch is all crazy. It can be a lot harder and really finicky to try to attach a texture to something where the, the bearing and the pitch is, um, is not set to zero. So to expand the edges here, I'm going to go back to effects and presets panel and I'll go down to stylize and there's an effect called CC Repetile. 
and you can just apply that to your texture. And now I just use these expand parameters and I'm going to expand the edges to cover up the edges of my comp here. So I can zoom out a little bit so I can see what's going on. And I'm holding the shift key to bring this and um, push this out faster. And you can see this is kind of intensive on the system here. And this is the real limitation of this technique is that you can't do huge zooms. So you can't go from like full wide into a city. And the reason for that is you're limited to how far this repetile effect will allow you to push this texture. So the more you expand it out, the more memory it's going to take up and the, the more processor intensive it's going to be. So you have to limit this technique to kind of small movements. So we'll just expand this out, expand it out, expand it out. And now if we take a full screen look at this, it's looking pretty good. However, you can see the edges of our, um, of our tile here. So at the bottom of the effect here, you have blend borders. I'm going to set that to 10% and that should make that look a little bit nicer. Now we got something going on here. And the really powerful thing here is I can swap out the looks. So the way to do this is you select a texture up here and then you just grab another texture and you drag it over top and you hold alt and that's going to automatically swap it out. And now we can quickly keep doing this until we find a texture that we like. This is a really subtle texture here. Now, if you really want to create some cool animated looks, um, there you can use uh, displacement maps to have the actual map move with the folds of the paper. I created another tutorial, I think a few years ago, that shows you how to do this technique. It's um, I'll share the link to that tutorial down in the video description or in a card here. Okay, so there you have it. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Uh, once again, go follow that link in the video description to check out more assets from Envato Elements. It's a really, really great deal. I highly suggest you go check it out. I had I even had a patron ask the other day. Um, I get a lot of patrons or, or just a lot of viewers who say I can't afford geo layers and I want to create some kind of map animations. Well, not only will you be able to find all these different elements and assets on Envato, but they have a lot of template projects as well to create maps. I just directed a patron the other day because um, he wanted to create some map animations of like China and have markers. And there's a lot of pre-made templates on there that um, don't require any additional plugins or extensions so very helpful in that arena as well as always if you enjoyed the video give me a thumbs up if you want to see more map content like this be sure to subscribe to the channel hit that notification bell i've got a playlist down in the video description as well uh, called monday maps where i just try to put all of my map related content on that playlist however now my entire channel is kind of map related content and if you're really a lover of maps, be sure to go check out my Patreon page where you get a bunch of exclusive content and downloads and all that cool stuff. Okay, see you in the next one.